Good evening, everybody, hey. to another episode of Cooking with English Spirit. I'm James Lawrence, joined once again by Dr. John Walters at Tragadic Manor. John, what are we doing and what have you got there? We are going to do something with St. Perrin's rum, our white rum, um, strongly associated with this ceremony place here. So, we're going to start by making a simple cocktail and then we're going to do brunch for a change with some spirit. So, um, index, um, so contents wise, the cocktail is going to be a gorgeous St. Perrin's rum with some freshly juiced raspberries, some grated lime zest and some double cream. That is going to be miraculous. And then whilst we're sipping on that, we're going to do a brunch. And what we're going to do for our brunch is going to be a full pan um, hash brown, lovely golden with some baked eggs. And then we're going to take our smoky bacon and we're going to caramelise that with demerara sugar and some lovely St. Perrins. All nice and crisp, sort of on top. We might shove a bit of greenery in there for the parsley for those who are um, like greenery. And then we're going to scoff it right down. Sounds good to me. That's what we're doing. So let's press on then. I've got a glass with some crushed ice and I'm going to add me raspberry smoothie. Look at that. I mean, that's gorgeous anyway. So that's just simply raspberries I have put together. Now I'm going to take my gorgeous knuckle removing device, my microplane, which I strongly suggest you do better than I normally do. Just add a bit of greenery and greenery is quite popular. Probably around about three minor strips in there. Pop it in. So I've got my chopstick. There you go. The smells of this are fantastic. Even if you've got a touch of hay fever, which I've got, mate. In that goes. Now I'm gonna add some jumble cream, so I like a swirl. So uh, uh, this happens to be from M&S. Because uh, I was feeling flush. Cool, a bit upmarket for yeah, this bit, series, isn't well, it? It's also right next door to Little, where we got the bacon. Cream to taste, and then I'm just going to add a double shot of this. And it's going to turn into a kind of raspberry ripple in a glass, really, which is the idea. Uh, there's our appearance. In it goes. I'm just going to swirl that around. For those of you interested in mathematics, you'll note the fractal nature of the pattern forming and also the raspberry ripple in this. And that's pretty much it. You could shake, if you if you like cocktail shakers, you can do that and you can get it all homogenized. This is rather pink, isn't it? You have to come up with a name for this. And, uh, okay, James, you're the tester. Social distancing, bubbles, blah, blah, blah. Or whatever the current blend is. See what you think to that. Wow. Big, big on flavour. That is raspberry lime freshness. Yeah, it should be good there. Oh, great nose. That's delicious. Nice, nice and fresh, light, summery. Go on, that is raspberry ripple with lime with a great base. Let's have a Yeah, go on, have a go on that. Ha ha ha, this is the perk. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have a fight over that. Well, that worked well, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Okie doke. We should put that to one side and back in a tick once I've assembled what we need. And we're back. So we're going to do some hash browns. Um, you can use waxy potatoes. Waxy is best for hash browns because if you haven't done hash browns at home, you know, one of the things to try and avoid is lots of water in the spuds. Waxy spuds tend to be less watery um, and therefore you don't have to do so much squeezing because what you want is deep caramelization of these things so they're golden brown, lots of flavor. Um, so you're gonna try and take the water out. Um, now when we say waxy, what potatoes are you using well, here? I, I've come across um, Charlotte's and things like that are quite good, but because we're posh and we overstepped our budget, I went for Jersey Royals today. Um, because we also make a lovely Jersey Royal vodka for called Royal Match for some guys and girls, and they do a gorgeous job of that. And I kind of prompted me in that direction, so that's why I chose them. Seasonal, 
Yeah. Very good. I'm just going to, I might need more onion than this, so I'm just going to peel the onions. And why am I using red onions? Are they any better than white onions? Some people say they are. I'm using them because they're red. That's it for now. Um, two onions, about right. This is all down to how much onion you like. Now, if you don't like onions, don't use them. If you like chives, add some chives. Just peeling them to get rid of what we need. So you see, they're rather nice, aren't they? There they are. So, quite pretty. And the challenge here is to grate. So we're gonna grate, mix, and then we're gonna squeeze to get most of the water out. Then we're gonna fry until gold in our pan, flip over, and then once all that's done, we're gonna bake a couple of eggs on top of it. It's gonna take about six minutes while we start caramelizing apples and, uh, sorry, um, the smoky thing. So with these, I can't, <laughs> I can't stipulate how careful to be with the grater, yeah? Because it's a nightmare. So I'm just grating these down. And you're always, pro I'm probably gonna end up using uh, a lot more onion because obviously we wanna cut the onion and we don't particularly want to nagger ourselves as we go. So be cautious with the onions. If you do, I'll get it all on camera, so Thanks. no pressure at all. Lovely. You'll probably have to edit out my screams because I've done it so often, it's more screams of frustration actually than anything else. So, big chunks. Um, sniffing a bit because it's eye watering, but thankfully my contact lenses aren't helping, which won't help James because he hasn't got any. So, Usually smelly visions uh, would be a good thing, oh, but today, yeah, everyone doing right. eye watering, guys. Um, so you can see, kind of being positive, and at the same time, being careful. You can get um, ones that have got something to press against. Oh, gosh. Very emotional. Oh, okay. So, oh, the spuds, probably a bit easier, and they are a bit easier. A lot easier, actually. So. Just gonna get these till I've got enough. Again, quite nice. You might want to cut a bit of this out, James, don't we? Same. I could get something to press on it, make it easier. But just going to lose a bit of spud as we go. Obviously, if you had a nice big spud, like a Charlotte, it'd be a quicker process and less risk. The ultimate, ultimate skill is not to not look. <laughs> so, excuse me while I focus on the spots. I was so, back. Around about 900 years later, we've done all of our grating and um, oddly enough, I have all my digits as intact as when I set out. So that's all quite nice, but it's gonna have a lot of juice in it. So what I recommend, just get rid of that, is to press that juice out as much as you can. Which you can do by just grinding with your hands, whatever you like. But I'm gonna put it in, I've got it in a sieve here, and all I'm going to do is basically just kind of press as much of that as I can through to get as much liquid out, yeah? And this is gonna make for better caramelized product. See the juice coming out there? As much out, much out as you can, with obviously not losing as much. It's coming out a lot now. And I'd strongly recommend this, because otherwise you're going to poach for a while in juice. You're not gonna get it all out, but as much as you can, and you're gonna get a better result. Okay. Already smells nice with the onions. Mm. I have. Give it one last push. There we go. Now, hoping that's going to do a better job. So I'm just going to get rid of this in there, and I'm going to put it back in here. Add some seasoning. Don't want too much seasoning because again, that's going to want to season later when you boil off a bit of the liquid because you don't want to have the seasoning 
extract further liquid. Yeah. So let's go. Frying pan off. Uh, again, you want. Remember last week we talked, or we've always talked about different oils for different occasions. The potatoes are going to caramelise for 180 degrees as they would in a chip fryer, uh, and you kind of want an oil that isn't going to fall apart before that. So you could use blended olive oils as opposed to extra virgin, or in this case we're using a great, really good British rapeseed oil. Similarly so, sunflower oil will do the two, those are kind of my favourites. So we're going to get this reasonably hot, and then all we're going to do is whop it in, spread it out, crisp it up, and then we'll flip it over as we go. Colour contrast. Oh. Mm -hmm. It's a great dish um, for, for brunch or if you like an all-day breakfast. We, we, <laughs> we're a bit disorganized today and so we're actually having our brunch in the evening. <laughs> I don't think there's a definition of the latest you can have a brunch. Oh, interesting. So. Okay. So in it goes, nice sizzle here. Spread it out. Don't poach your hands. Spread it out. Don't worry if it cracks, okay? Because we're going to slide it onto a plate to flip it over. I'm, if we get this right, it's going to be about three minutes or so before we have a look at the brown in there. And again, this is a medium high heat, is that correct? Yeah, that's a medium to high heat. Um, obviously, if you're using a nice heavy frying pan, that's going to help you at this stage. We've got a lot of stuff in there. And if I had a thin pan, it wouldn't be carrying so much heat. Yep. As soon as it goes in, it dials down again, chance of poaching, etc. So we want to really, I'm going to season once I turn it. So I'm just going to wait about three minutes while we're doing that. Um, good opportunity to talk about cocktails in the usual manner of being so good about filling us in on St. Currents. Yes, right, let's talk about uh, wonderful rum sponsoring this evening, this, this evening's brunch. Um, so for those of you that don't know St. Pippin's, um, this, is our, this is our white rum that we make. Um, it is our Cornish rum because uh, it's made with water that comes from a spring, which is about 20 metres away from where we're standing right now. So um, <clears throat> we've, got, we've got a spring, um, gives us some uh, water from an aquifer from right underneath the historic Tregunic Manor, which has been here for approximately 800 years since its first incarnation. Uh, it's got some lovely Cornish water that goes in with a really nice rum. Um, people often say to us uh, that they don't like white rum, and for good reason, because they usually stop at Bacardi and the other kind of stuff you can get in the supermarket, which is great if that's your sort of thing. But when you get one like this, which is uh, distilled as usual from pure molasses, uh, this is triple distilled, which means it goes into one of our small copper pots, goes three times around. Um, uh, and uh, as you can see, this is not aged, so it, it just comes straight out of the still, and this is what you get, cut down with a lovely Cornish water. And um, at 42%, you can actually sip this on the rocks. Uh, it's very nice and neat. I like to have it over ice. You can chuck a white lime wedge in there if you like, and it is actually very nice. As a neat drink, a uh, pinch of Cornish sea salt doesn't go wrong as well. You can whack that in there, or as you can imagine, the potential for cocktails is very nice. It goes very nice in a Cornish mojito. If you want to make a daiquiri with it, like something like that, very good. Um, but yeah, considering it's a white spirit, it's just got oceans of really nice, gorgeous raisin, light cracked caramel flavor, great with molasses, which means it's really lovely if you're gonna caramelize bacon in it or do anything else. So um, yeah, give white rum a chance, especially this one.
So you can do that. So we've um, so this is side one of our our product, and um, we've just literally put a plate on and turned it over as you would an omelette at home. And um, now I'm gonna hopefully slide back in, unlikely at one piece, because I'm not good at that. And then we're gonna cook again for a short period, and then we're gonna put our eggs in. So let's just see um, how. Et voila, there you go. So I'm just gonna give that about two minutes. So on the stove, pretty much everything caramelizes in two to three minutes whether it's steak or anything. Which is quite just number if you do it often enough, you kind of pick it up, your stove will be different. But that's really nice now, because that's beginning to smell like a hash brown. And we've got gorgeous colors. And as you can see, the different colors on the potato and the onion mean different flavor. Each of those colors represents a different Maillard wow. reaction and a spread of, spread of flavors, yeah? Wow. So that's what we're after. We want different things with different sugar contents, different protein contents, different acidity to give us that gorgeous golden caramelized loveliness. Yeah, that's what we're after. Now, got to be a bit cautious here because we're going to put some eggs on top. Yeah, and bake in the oven for about six minutes. Undercook the underneath because that's where all the heat is in the pan at the moment. So you put it in for too long on this side and it might be a little bit too crisp for you. Yeah, but don't poach it. I'm going for about two, two and a half minutes, which gives me about another minute and a half before I'm happy to plop some eggs on that. And now we come to the eggs. Eggs are really important because, you know, everybody wants a good one. I don't want a crap one. Um, I am steam coming off, I'm still reducing the water. Yeah, that's steam. That's not burnt fat or anything else. So we're driving the water out crispier. So I can at this stage in about, I've got another minute to go, wait, pull that off and leave it. And then crack my eggs as I get close to caramelizing my bacon, which is what I'm gonna do. Cause what I, it's gonna take longer than six minutes to get my bacon exactly as crispy as I want. So no point having my eggs ready if I haven't got my topping. So in about a minute, take it off, leave it stand. It's got enough heat in that pan to do everything. It's not gonna get soggy, it's gonna be crisp enough. And then go back to it, crack my eggs, pop it in the oven when my bacon's half done. So always good for trying to bring it all together. Hash browns are spectacular. A lot of people think they're unhealthy because they're used to kind of potato fritter things that are served elsewhere. But you get this right and it opens up a whole world because all of a sudden you can do proper fish cakes, yeah? You can take this recipe where you can either use shredded potato or you can use mashed potato. Some people don't like mash, but it gives a better texture. And I can fold in freshly prepared crab meat, smoked fish, haddock, anything I like, spices, roll it together and make this gorgeously thin fish cake in a hash brown style, which then takes you to a different level when it comes to a really refreshing lunchtime. So I could perhaps serve that with um, cooked chilled asparagus with a hot hollandaise sauce which would be a lovely, refreshing um, snack to have at brunch too. Um, or substitute other bits and pieces in there. Um, bits of parma ham would be gorgeous. Um, even bits of pate melted into it would give it a really thick, coarse feel to it, you know, so you can dial it in any direction you like. It'd be gorgeous then where you could have a stuffed mushroom on top with a fresh butter parsley sauce, maybe some crunchy kale to balance that out. So it can become your platter and you just decide what you want in the architecture of that platter. So that's actually two minutes rather than a minute and a half because I just net it on. And I'm gonna whip that off and I'm just gonna leave it there. Next up, I'm going to start with my bacon next. So let's grab a pan and, and caramelize some bacon. So caramelizing, it's a ridiculous thing. Why caramelize bacon? Sweet. Sweet syrup, I mean, Americans have got it spot on. Caramelized bacon with syrup and pancakes is spectacular. You get all the umamis of the bacon, you get all of the sweetness from your caramel. And remember, any excess you just drain away. So I'm just gonna get some butter in there 
and uh, some demerara sugar. I'm going to take around about 50 grams of butter. I'm going to cube it. Why am I cubing it? Because it melts faster and is more evenly distributed when I'm in a slight hurry. Um, so I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to get some sugar in there. How much sugar? There we go. I normally go for around about that much, which is about two handfuls, probably three heat teaspoons, okay? How much bacon? As much as you want the scoff. Yeah? Just get that so it's a bit of a slurry and it's evenly distributed. You see it's gonna get quite hot quite quickly. If you wanted to go the extra mile, would I use clarified butter? Clarified butter is nuttier when you remove all those dairy solids from it. Easiest way to clarify butter is to take butter, put it in a Ziploc bag, pop it in a pan of boiling water until it's all melted. Then take that bag and put it in a glass. All the solids will go to the bottom and the clarified butter will go to the top. Leave it in the fridge until it sets, cut off the bottom, drain away the solids. Couldn't be easier. Lovely way to do it. Clarified butter, nuttier. Will that nuttiness contribute to your bacon? That's your choice. Does it work for your bacon? You decide. Um, I actually think in this case, because I'm using smoked bacon, because I want the syrup and smoke, because that's gorgeous with onions. Um, I don't need it here today. So I'm gonna get this going. I'm gonna add some bacon. Uh, I'm gonna argue that bacon rashes don't have much on them. So I'm gonna use a lot. But that's because I'm a pig. So I'm gonna layer them in. I'm going to start to get them half caramelised and as soon as things start to stick on the pan I'm then going to come in with my alcohol to kind of clean the bottom of the pan and bring it back into the meat to retain all that flavour. And this um, is nice bacon. So just going to, so we're frying them in bacon and sugar, nothing complicated at all. Um, this is ridiculous. <laughs> totally ridiculous. Um, and I attempted, should we put a little lime in there just to kind of make it a little bit? <laughs> this is a brunch that you probably have to lie down <laughs> afterwards. One boozy brunch. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so it takes a little time. And what else are we expecting? So you said the rum will obviously help to clean the bottom of the pan out. Yeah, very the much alcohol, so. But... So as it comes off, we're going to... What we've got here, think of it in flavour spectrum. We've got some lovely, this is beechwood smoked bacon, nice and dry. Um, so we're going to be able to trap a lot of flavour in there. The syrup is going to add to that smokiness really nicely. And why am I using St. Perrins? Well, St. Perrins, because we distill it um, four times in actuality. When we do that, we heighten the level of citrus notes in that. It's really quite orangey. And that is going to be gorgeous with this, those orange citrus notes that aren't as sharp as lime, smooth, warm, delicious. So that's why we're putting it in. Um, what else will I do? Juniper wouldn't work. It would just be too, a bit too herbaceous. Um, I guess lemon gino, I might just get away with. You know, that would be quite interesting. Um, I could go caramel rum. That would be really tasty too. Um, add another level of, um, to the syrup. And you can see here now, we're beginning to get some gorgeous colour. I'm going to start turning that in a sec. I will see where we go. And then I'm going to get some out. Takes a while, so this is the slowest bit. So I'm just going to have a look, make sure I'm going to start to get some lovely colour on that bacon. Yeah. And we're going to, this is going to end up dark, dark molasses. You know, it's going to be seriously brown, crispy, but not falling, um, shattering as if it was charred. Because that's the problem with, I find, with rashes, um, is that they become a bit too brittle. So we want to render off all this fat. And then we're going to bring that flavour back in the fat to coat it lightly with the alcohol. Using it to emulsify the fat, that will be taken off. Sure. Yeah? So... You can see, as the temperature rises, that caramel is getting darker and darker and darker. Losing a bit of sweetness, 
but that's okay because we've still got quite a lot of residual sweetness in there. I mean, come on. I actually think if I wanted to go super healthy, I would take that and I would take a grilled fresh mackerel Ooh. and some lovely chopped parsley and chives, melted butter, a bit of sour cream, drizzle that over for a low carb style breakfast or possibly just toasted or deep fried or um, fried sourdough to give it a crunch underneath. Wow. So, you know, at every stage, your mind probably wonders what else could I be doing with this bacon right now is what's passing through my head, apart from putting it in my belly. And I'm kind of thinking, actually, that would go really well with mackerel, because we smoke mackerel, you know? So we're taking that smoked element of the bacon and applying it, and fresh mackerel, if you've not had it, go and get some. Um, and as we're in Cornwall, or anywhere near the seaside, the flavors are so subtle. It's not at all fishy, it's light, it's delicate, the texture's great. And that goes really well. So you can see now we're getting some gorgeous colours. Got these lovely nodules of flavour, yeah? In there. It's going to take on a totally different world. Um, and then once I add the alcohol, the uh, St. Perrins, I'm going to start working on my um, finishing off my hash browns. So the more time you put into these, the better product you will get. Look at that. Yeah, we're getting some gorgeous stuff. And all this, this stuff down here is what we're going to deglaze, what we're going to manage to pull off the pan that we normally throw away. The colours now are getting gorgeous. The reds and the oranges are coming out, getting some lovely stuff. So just keeping an eye on that. I'm kind of OK now that we've got so many interesting stuff in there that I'm going to add my shots in through. St. Perrins is really intense. The orange notes, citrus notes are gorgeous. I'm going to drizzle them around the side rather than on the bacon because any, that's, any of my caramelization that's happened on the bacon, I don't want to wash off. Yeah? So I'd rather lift it. Get in there and have a smell. Wow. Oh my God. Ooh. So that. Sound and smell. Yes. Oh, it's intense. You can see how we've heightened that caramelization. Really dark, dark bacon notes coming out now. Yeah. On the side here. Gorgeous. That smells like beating the Americans at their own game. Wow. We that don't, smells really We don't good. want to be saying that. You'll be buying a Huawei phone next. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, here we go. Starting to get, I want that temperature to rise now to trap that bacon in a syrup that is becoming darker and darker. Yeah? And then we're just going to crisp up the fat, which is still going to take about six minutes. So this is a pretty good time now to look at possibly putting our eggs together. Um, now here, we've got, oops, wrong ones. Those are duck eggs. We've got, our neighbours are great. If only I knew where I'd put their eggs. From Tregullick. So these are gorgeous. And all I'm going to do, I could go white, but I'm just going to go one egg there, like so. And I'm going to go another one here. Depending on how many eggs you want to eat, two is enough for today. And that's it. Those are going to go in the oven. You could do four. I'm just going to go two here for this one because we've got some good stuff. And I'm gonna bake the eggs. That's gonna be about six minutes in there. Approximately and what temperature? That's about 190. Yeah. So I'm gonna go set my timer for five minutes to have a look. Uh, okay, Google, set timer for five minutes. Sure, five minutes. It's normally five to six minutes to bake the eggs. You want them set, the white set, but you don't particularly, obviously, 
you like hard yolks, go for hard yolks. I don't I like them too much. So, that's good. And now, just focusing, this has taken a look at this. I mean, the colours here, this is seriously gorgeous. Look at it. We haven't burnt anything. You know, we've got, look at that. This is a seriously gorgeous rasher. Yeah. What it's all about. We've just got to enjoy. It. Look at that. Now, remember, we've got a bit of latent heat here, so when we take them off, they're still going to cook. So we don't want them to become shards. So I'm probably going to take this off the heat now, and I'm going to lift them up a bit and leave them drain the touche because I don't want them to to go to total ness. So I can do that comfortably by just. Lifting all that up as so they drain the touche. And then I can put that, if I'm sensible, on the something. Um, something like that. Yeah. It's a bit hot. Um, look at the colour, you see how sticky that is. The smell, have a smell, see what you think. Oh, I can smell it from here, it smells absolutely amazing. Just have a good old. That is buttery, smoky, delight. Yeah, just, yeah, delight. Oh my god, look at that. Absolutely outrageous. Sausages. <laughs> Brudge, for God's sake. That's meant to be a naff thing in a calf. <laughs> So it's really, I think this is, these are gorgeous. I mean, um, we'll get some fresh parsley and things just to adorn it. But you can see here how gorgeous this concoction is. And you've then got this bacon fat and syrup, and you can go on to use that. You know, if you're doing a kind of uh, a pan jus or something like that, something just cooked in the pan with maybe you've done some uh, fried off some chicken breast or whatnot, put it back in. Glaze the chicken with it, give it a really nice lift. You know, don't have endless stocks of things and whatever, but if you're planning something like that tomorrow, that'd be great on ribs. You know, if you're gonna make a nice, uh, spicy rack of ribs, glazing it with that is a great way to start that process. Maybe with some star anise, a bit of chili, some local honey, whatever else. So nothing wasted, and you've made a really good something else here too that you can take away. Obviously, with those rum components as well. Sure. Wow. So, let's have a shifting where we are with this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Those egg ones. This is a great way to do eggs because, one, it's very hands off. Two, you don't stand the risk of them sticking to whatever you're doing. Yeah or poor handling thereafter, one of my lifelong issues, um, it's going to be on what you're serving. Yeah. Simple slice down the minute, put it on, on onto your plate and then garnish with your bacon. They're still a few minutes away, so it actually might well be six minutes. So in the meantime, James, revisit your beautiful cocktail. Let's see how you get on with that. Thank you. Didn't really have anything to do with it, but I will happily drink some more of it. So we're going, uh, you said we're going to go for some parsley to garnish, so we get some green in there somehow. Yeah, we've just got some parsley over here, and we'll just take a few bits of that, just to, because parsley and eggs are a bit flat, I think. And if someone were to use uh, back bacon instead of uh, streaky bacon, okay, would... Google, stop. 
Would you say that any difference in the method or? Uh, you've got lower fat content, so it's going to take you a bit longer, so just be aware of that. Sure. Um, entirely your choice, you might have. Go for smoked bacon, you know, you, you've got different preferences. So I'm just going to check this. I think we're going to be a few minutes off, actually. So let's just see. Yeah, we're a good three minutes away, actually. So we're now going to time travel into the future, three minutes, where this would have run out. Ding, core. What have we here? We have the future, now. So, um, so we bake our eggs. Um, Argo ovens take a little longer because they are, we don't circulate the air. Um, so we have that and we're not going to serve. So I'm just going to cut a piece of this into a wedge. As I say, I could have done an extra couple of eggs, but didn't on this occasion. So I'm just going to cut through this a bit. Super hot. It's in the oven. Yeah. This is always a challenge for anyone. As we've got two, <laughs> might be that I'm coming back and doing another one in a minute. Okay. Um, bear with me while I get an instrument. Hopefully, it's uh, appropriate. Right. Always difficult. This smells gorgeous. You've got the onions. Here. Yeah. Baked egg. I'm going to take our rashes. Just going to take these gorgeous, crisp rashes that are set in syrup. Really? Look at that. And then bits of parsley just to give us a little bit of colour. There you go, that's um, baked egg, bacon caramelised. We think Perrin's rum, a little cracker black pepper, just a finesse touch of salt over it. Perfect. Okay, James, you know what you've got to do next. Right then, if I must, I've been thinking about nothing else. Let's get your knife. Definitely start with this bacon. God, that's, that's not crispy on the inside at all. No. That, what a difference it makes cooking it like that. That's it's so still, still so soft and tender. That is amazing. It's not amazing. It's so, it's not chewy, but it's not crispy or flaky. Mm -hmm. And the, it's still got all that smokiness as well, despite not having any char on it at all. What an amazing coating. I don't give a head bacon like that. It's, um, it's a lovely way to do bacon. Wow. That is Oh, that is absolutely sublime. Okay, so hash brown. Next bit. Yeah, I'll, I'll just go for. Mm -hmm. I'll go that by itself. So that's such a difference to a freezer hash brown. Mm -hmm. God, I haven't had a hash brown like that in a while. That's really gorgeous the onion really picks it up it is mm -hmm. yeah 
don't want too much fat in there. There's a nice clean taste to that. Mm -hmm. That's not stodgy at all, but mm, try some of those together. Let's get a bit of that egg white in there as well. Mmm. Oh. That is a brunch. That's what we want. That is what every brunch should be. Mmm. Very well done. Glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> Come again. Next week. <laughs> well, I think I'll have to if I must. <laughs> well, thank you very much. And yeah, see you next week. Catch you then. <laughs>